Hello chaps, Troy Francis here, coming at you from Berlin, where I have been sojourned for a few days, and I wanted to talk about something that is quite close to my heart today, which is, what kind of life should a guy in his 40s be living anyway? And I say 40s, could be talking like late 30s, whatever, let's not split hairs here. What I'm saying is, what kind of life should a guy be living when he's really past the cusp of adulthood and he's into either late youth or indeed middle age. What kind of life should the guy be living? And of course, the answer to that question is whatever kind of life he wants. You know, I mean, that's the simple answer, isn't it? Um, whatever kind of life you want to live, that's the life you should be living. Now, you know, I can only really talk about my own choices and my own lifestyle uh, because that's the only thing I've got direct experience of. So I can say a little bit about that and you can then see whether you agree or whether that's not something that you want in your life or, or whatever. And then ultimately, everyone has to make up their own mind. So look, if you want to get married and you want to have 2.4 kids and all of that, then great. Most people do. Or maybe not even get married, but most people want to settle down. They want to find a partner. They want to have probably children, they want to have to start a family of, of some kind, and that's absolutely fine. But I think that it's different strokes for different folks, right? And not everybody is going to have the same aspirations in life, it's just the way that it is. So for myself personally, and I'm in my late 40s, right, so just to put the context out there, for me, really, it was preordained, it was pre-written back when I was a kid, back when I was a very, very small child, that I would end up living life as a bachelor. And the reasons for that are no doubt complex and manifold. You know, there's many different reasons why that might be the case. Not least because my family background was problematic and challenging. And, you know, as a kid, I never had that advertisement for family, family, being this really amazing, warm, happy, nurturing kind of a thing. So that's one thing, that's one reason. But also, from a young age, I also was very, I was introverted, true. But I also just really, really liked my own space. You know, I like my own space, my own time, and the freedom to do with that time, what I, whatever I wanted to do. And in many ways, I'm a very social person. I was just out with a friend just now, we had dinner. Great to catch up with him, not seen him for a little while, so that was really cool. Hopefully be catching up with a few more friends on this trip as well, and that will be cool. But equally, just the way that I'm wired, and you may be like this or you may not, the way that I'm wired, is that I also really like my own space. I really like to come at the end of the evening, come back to my apartment, shut the door, and have that privacy, and have that space, okay? And that ability just to do whatever the hell I wanna do. Now, if I was married, or if I was in a serious relationship, or if I had a family, then obviously my ability to just come home and shut the door would be curtailed and my freedom to do whatever the hell I wanted to do would also be necessarily curtailed okay so for me the decision really was made a long long time ago many decades ago of how my life was really going to look and by and large that's how it's turned out you know, in um, Greek tragedy, there's an idea that character is destiny. Okay, character is destiny. In other words, the, the character's essential attributes or traits, or indeed flaws, lead to his eventual, wherever, wherever he ends up, his eventual downfall or his eventual success, okay? Um, there was this idea in Greek tragedy about the fatal flaw in the character, and that fatal flaw 
if it was say jealousy or obsession or lust or anger or whatever it was that fatal flaw would ultimately lead to the character's downfall okay um and i think that there's something in that i think that there's certain elemental things about us as human beings that dictate the path that we take that dictate where we end up in life okay and that could be for good or for bad for myself i've ended up right now on the 15th of march or whatever the date is i've ended up pretty much where i always would have expected i would have ended up i don't mean geographically i just mean in terms of you know the situation that i'm in and it's not that you know, I haven't deviated from that path. You know, it's not that I haven't had long-term relationships. It's not that I haven't lived with women and certainly gone in a direction where it's looked as though it was probably going to go towards, you know, a more conventional sort of marriage and whatever setup. But something always got in the way of, of that going to its conclusion. Usually me. <laughs> Usually me messing it up. Okay? Um, and... It's not that every time I've come out of a relationship, I've whooped and hollered and punched the air with glee because now I'm back to, you know, back to myself and back to my independence again. Far from it. Far from it. Coming out of relationships can be incredibly painful and incredibly difficult and incredibly emotionally challenging for me as an individual. But ultimately... Why did that happen? Why did, why did I push that, those relationships in that way? Or why did I create those flaws in the relationship that, that ended up with me being on my own at the end of it? Well, ultimately, and there is, a, there is a school of thought that says if you look at a person, if you look at a person and where they are in life, that represents really where they wanted to be on some elemental level, on some fundamental level, if that makes sense. And as I say, I think for me, where I've ended up about now, it's probably about how I kind of always wanted it, really. And it's not that there aren't trade-offs, because obviously there are trade-offs, right? I mean, no form of life, no form of lifestyle, rather, is going to be free from compromise and free from downside. You know, every decision you make, in some way you're going to regret it. Because there's always going to be something that you could have done that you chose not to do. And then you start to think, oh, what would have happened if I had done that? So if you get married and you have a couple of kids and you move to, to a nice house somewhere in the country or whatever, there's always going to be that part of you that thinks, yeah, but what if I, what if I bought that motorcycle and I'd ridden around South America on it, you know, and I hadn't done any of this domestic stuff, what then? And if you buy the motorcycle and you drive around South America on it and you forego the marriage and the kids, there's always going to be that part of you that thinks, oh, but what if I hadn't have done this motorcycle thing and I'd have got married to Sheila at college and we would have had those kids and it would have been so beautiful and lovely. So whatever you do, there's going to be an element of regret. There's going to be an element of sadness. And do I have sadness in my life? Yeah, absolutely. But... Is that sadness less than what I would be experiencing if I'd have taken another route? I don't think so, no. Because I know fundamentally the way that I'm built. And the way that I'm built is I'm pretty avoidant, naturally, in relationships. I really, really, really like my own space. I really like my own company. I'm quite introverted, so I don't like people around me too much. You know, it's fine, I can hang out with people, I can have a laugh with people, you know, I can spend extended periods of time with people, but in the end, I want to be able to pull away and do my own thing. And there's something else as well. The key thing for me, really, that's been important all my life, has been writing. Okay, and writing is a pastime or an occupation that requires extended periods of concentration and focus on your own, pretty much. 
I mean, yes, you can have somebody else living in the house. You can have somebody in the next room doing whatever they're doing. But people, and believe me, because I speak from experience here, people get fed up with that after a while. <laughs> because not everyone's like me. Most people that I've dated, they're actually pretty social. They're pretty normal kind of people. And they want you to be around. They want you to, you know, they want to do stuff with you. They want to hang out. And when all you want to do is shut the door and sit down at the laptop and get on with the work, that doesn't really sit very well uh, with a conventional type relationship, okay? Or certainly not like a live-in type relationship anyway. So for me, the important thing really has been to do a type of work that inherently demands long periods of time alone. Okay, so that there's another pillar to this as well. Now, I've been working on something recently. I haven't really done a lot of writing over the last few years for various reasons, largely James Tusk, to be honest, and the fact that we've been traveling around and um, getting into all kinds of trouble in different places around the world, which is great. I mean, loads of material there, you know, lots of fun. But just recently, I've been working on a, a piece of writing that I'm doing, and I've had a daily target getting up, sitting down at the keyboard, put some music on, black coffee, get on with it, hit the daily word count, okay? And do you know what? Very satisfying. I mean, whether the thing's actually any good or not, I, I don't know. I'm doing the first draft at the moment, right? So you do the first draft, gonna leave it for a, a, a small amount of time, go back to it, read through, edit, amend, probably then send it to a professional editor, um, do some final tweets and then, and then you know, set it loose on the world. But um, regardless of how good it is objectively, and if anyone can ever measure that, but regardless of what other people think about it, the act of creating it, the act of sitting down and doing that writing in solitude necessarily for the periods of time when I've been doing the writing, I thought was gonna be a bit of a pain in the arse and I thought right I'm gonna to have to psych myself up for this and do you know what actually it's been my salvation over the last couple of weeks because getting into the zone and doing something that I'm really passionate about is my salvation it is it is the activity that makes me feel okay with myself. And you know what's really interesting? I've actually been more productive, even though it takes it out of you to some degree to be sitting down and writing and writing several thousand words every day. Um, it's quite mentally draining and it's not physically tiring, but it's quite sort of mentally draining. But funnily enough, it's made me more productive with other stuff because, um, well, I don't know. I mean, when you sit down and you do that and then you're fired up and then you want to do more and you want to create more. So it's made me actually more productive on with, with, with the other creative stuff that I need to do as well, which is great, okay? So you can see, and you can, you can start to see by the way I'm talking about it, you know, there's this kind of excitement about that creative process, but that creative process, as I say, it demands solitude, or at least it demands extended periods when you're on your own. Now, how does that, how does that sit? How does that sit with the more conventional sort of lifestyle of, that many guys in their 40s might have, you know, maybe being married or having a few kids or, or whatever, right, you know. Well, it doesn't sit very well, does it? So what's someone in my position to do? Are you meant to forego the thing that you've always been really passionate about in order to satisfy your emotions? let's say, because there's an emotional component to this as well, isn't there? There's that emotional desire for connection, to fit in, um, there's the biological drive and all the rest of it. But is it, the, is it the correct thing to bow to those emotions and forego the thing that you're really passionate about? I don't think it is. I think the point is right. I think we need to be very honest with ourselves about the way that we're wired. And I think we need to be very honest with ourselves about what we want and what we don't want in our lives. And then I think we need to go with that. 
and it's very very hard because there, there's competing and and there's competing drives and this kind of stuff is never entirely clear cut right there's always going to be a voice over here saying this there's always going to be a voice over there saying something else in your own head as well as externally um and you've got competing desires within you but i think ultimately if i look back on my life and i look back at how i was when i was a kid and the desires that i had around this stuff when I was a kid, the desire for solitude, the desire for my own company, the desire to undertake cerebral activities on my own, the desire to create, those things, I believe, have always been ascendant in me. Those things have always been the most important to me as an individual, okay? So how do I organize my life now? Well, right now, I'm not in a relationship. I haven't been in a relationship really for a couple of years. And I don't really get into relationships. Now that's not that I don't date, of course I don't. Of course I date, I spend time with women, have a great time, have fun, do different things together, do trips together, stuff like that. And all of that's great. But at the moment, there's no necessity for me, or real desire for me to get into any kind of serious relationship because where would that get me it's not going to get me any closer to doing the things that i actually want to do is it it's not going to it's not going to assist me in the process of creating the work so and again this is just me you you're entirely different your view of this stuff your experience your desires your drives are going to be entirely different but all i'm saying is that you can construct a life outside of what is popularly deemed to be correct behavior. You can do it. Are you gonna be happy? I don't know. I think happiness is a bit of a moot point. Is anybody really happy? People will claim that they're happy. Um, I think I would be extremely unhappy, extremely unhappy in a very constrictive domestic situation you know so i'm not going around in my videos and punching the air and whooping and hollering right now but ultimately i think that if i was in a constricting domestic situation of the kind i've described i would be deeply deeply unhappy and probably dangerously so so i think you've got to look at okay so how am i actually composed as a human being, cutting, cutting aside the crap, cutting aside the BS, what actually makes me tick? What do I like? What do I not like? Okay? And you've got to figure that out. And maybe it's the same for you. Maybe you've always known this since childhood. Maybe since you were a kid, you've actually known what you wanted. But you've been pulled this way and that by society and people telling you different things and your own conflicting desires. I think we need to get back to the essence. I think we need to think about ourselves as individuals and figure out what is it that I actually really want. When I cut away all the crap, when I cut away all the bullshit, what, what is the essence of me? Okay, I think that's what we need to do. And then we need to arrange our lives around that. Okay, we need to arrange our lives around that thing that we've identified about ourselves. Now, I know guys of all different ages. You know, I know a guy who's in his 70s very successful man, lives alone. He's been married, he's got a kid, but he lives alone, is quite solitary, spends a lot of time alone, does the work that he wants to do, has great recognition for it. Is he happy? He's not wandering around laughing the whole time, but I believe that he is living the life that he wants to live. And ultimately, I think that maybe that's the thing that we need to aim for. It's not so much like happiness in terms of like going around with a guffawing, with a stupid grin on our face. It's like, are you living the version of yourself that you actually want to live? Okay. And if you are, that's good because you're on the right path. And if you're not, then don't worry about superficial, you know, like, oh, ha ha ha, we had a great time at the barbecue on Sunday. Don't worry about that crap. You're not on the right path, okay? And only you 
are going to know what the right path is for you. But when I think about myself, I reckon I always really knew, as I've said, where I was, where I wanted to end up. And ultimately, a lot of the time, life is going to take you there anyway. Because you are going to, whether it's through your subconscious or through conscious decisions that you make, in the end, the will that you have inside to live in a certain way is going to override everything else and it's going to take you there anyway. So that's what I would do. I would look back and I would think, okay, so what was I like as a kid? What did I always really want as a kid? And as I, as I was growing up, and if I could cut away all the BS, what would my younger self want me to be doing now? Okay, have a think about it. You know, none of these things are easy. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you would like to talk to me about your situation, either with dating or really with any of this stuff, then you can get on a free call with me on Calendly. The link is below. You can book a free call with me. And um, yeah, we can have a chat and see if there's a way that I can help you with coaching or, or something else. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Write your comments below and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.